Hi guys, Luton here. Welcome back for another Battlefield Breakdown. Now, this is another full unedited round, and I'm going to tell you straight up, this round ends up being a loss for me. The interesting thing is, it's a loss because I end up on the team that I am fighting against to begin with. The reason why? Well, as I've shown on multiple other videos on my channel already, um, sometimes when I feel like the teams are imbalanced, uh, rather than move some players around, which I will also sometimes do on my server, um, I will often move myself, because often the best way to actually turn the game around, I find, is to get myself on the other team, and then I can start proactively making a difference. Now, first up, I'm dropping some smoke here. There we go, that's why, to try and sort of confuse and prevent these guys who may be coming across the road there. I always try to fire smoke far range in front as a kind of smoke screen to prevent myself being spotted as I move forward onto the base and the objective. So the first kind of 50% of this game is pretty much me and my guys and uh, you can see I'm over here, I've got uh, no smoking and fireman. There's a couple of guys I regularly play with. And the games this evening were fairly balanced, fairly mixed. Um, we had some rounds which didn't go well, some rounds that went really, really well, some rounds which were a nice kind of, uh, you know, sort of tug of war where we were kind of give and take from each team, each side. And I find, you know, the interesting thing when people message me saying, the server's imbalanced, change it, you would be surprised how often just the map makes a strong difference to a team. It's why I'm often reluctant to balance a team just after one or even sometimes two games because often it can take a little while for a team to get used to the enemy team to kind of get used to their gameplay style, their gameplay tactics and also perhaps you know take some time to sort of take that information in and think okay how am I going to use that and how am I going to change the game myself. Um, this building I want to point out whenever I go in this little sort of uh, what would you call it garage okay the garage this little garage that I'm in right here people often go into the corners which is all very well and good but I've actually found this little post right here is excellent for sitting on because um, I've had tanks move up and down here and I've sat behind this post and they have completely missed me not seen me at all so I, I quite like it dropping more smoke here just because they've got bravo so there's like a reasonable chance oh and that tank was coming in that's probably the main reason why I started dropping smoke actually not because there would be uh, but because the tanks coming in and I want to sort of I have nothing to take down the tank with at all so my literal choice was to sort of try and drop as much smoke as possible um, why am I dropping smoke on the tank to try and allow the support players to run in fast onto the tank there and uh, you know drop C4 on it which is what they did so the main thing with Conquest, and especially on this kind of fantastic full base Conquest you have on Sane, is to move fast and to, you know, preempt and get onto those bases. Now, a lot of people say to me very often, and you can see online and me, I remember in game here, me and online, we deliberately came through C. The reason being, well, the enemy are attacking D, and even though a lot of our guys have gone there to defend it, it makes sense that maybe one or two of the enemy have peeled off from D, and then that main, you know, they're, put, they're not going to go back to B, Okay, they're not going back to B because they already have it. They're not going to go to A because it's too far. So they're probably going to go to C. And that's what we caught that one guy doing there. And that's really what we're talking about when we say about preempting. Preempting doesn't mean thinking always where you want to attack next. It means sort of anticipating where the enemy may move. So me and online, we both had the same kind of thinking there about what was going to happen. And we moved there and we prevented that guy getting in there. And you think, well, one guy, what can one guy do? Well, as we know, obviously, more people can spawn on him. So it's not about what one guy can do but more about where one guy can be, all right? And if he could be on C, right, think about this. His four-man squad had gone to D. Let's just say that, right? They'd gone to D. They started capping it, but our guys went there to defend it, all right? Fair enough. Excellent. But if that one guy breaks away, and if that one guy gets onto C, the guys that just got killed, his squad mates on D, they can spawn straight on him at C, and then our whole team are at D, so they can't defend it, all right, because they're too far away. And then they would cap that base, and then they've got another strong foothold. So me and online there, by moving around and going to catch that guy out, we stopped him getting on the base. Now, obviously, you know, things are moving, other things are happening. You can see right now they've moved back up to C. But for that exact moment in time, we delayed that reaction. We got down to B, capped that up. We traded bases. Now, to bring back on my other point... People are often saying, like, when I say about moving fast or moving to the next base, etc, etc, and they're like, oh, that's so stupid, you should try and defend bases, blah, blah, blah. Defending bases is much more important. That's completely true, obviously, all right? You shouldn't just constantly trade bases, and this is perhaps something I haven't 
you know maybe I didn't explain it perfectly well on other videos trading bases is stupid it's a waste of time and you know it, it often sort of doesn't really get you anything all right because for example when you're in a sort of two base two base situation you know sometimes what will happen is the two enemy teams will kind of both go for another position and they lose one position and gain another so in the end of the day they haven't really gained sort of anything and potentially they might have just lost sort of perhaps some of the strength they had from some positions so it's entirely true that you shouldn't just constantly run around constantly trade bases on the other hand if you're in a sort of two base two base situation right 50 50 you've got to get something otherwise you're not going to win so you know you really need to kind of be proactive and move to those other bases and also it depends a little bit on who you're playing against if the enemy are constantly moving fast and they're always capping bases and they're always pushing onto other bases well for sure you can defend but sometimes the, the enemy team depending on how they want to play they can be so strong that it doesn't matter you know they're, if they're moving around in a big squad all the time then it's going to be very difficult to kind of stop them steamrolling base after base. You can perhaps intercept them and set up some kind of clever defense onto them. I was concerned that Xavier was still in here. I really <laughs> I play with Xavier and sometimes the guys I play with we get a little bit personal about things in games. I was like I must get him, must get him back. But no, he he'd gone so it's all right. But anyway, so basically the whole trading basis thing and like I've said before, you really have to kind of play it just from how things are in the game. Okay, you just have to look at how the game is playing out, how much they're moving around, how strong are they when they push onto bases, and you have to, from that, try and sort of deduce, okay, how am I going to play it? Do I need to be moving fast? And the other thing is that you've got to remember that not every single person on your team will be doing the same thing, all right? That's important to remember as well. Some players that you play with are going to stay on the bases, they are going to sort of have a slower approach to how they move around the map. So you got to remember that it, I'm talking generally from my point of view, all right? And I encourage people to sort of try my way of playing. My way of playing generally is to be quite proactive, get up the front, get onto the base, you know, be one step ahead. And I find that quite often that really, really does help out. And if uh, the other thing is if you have maybe one or two players, so if you only have like a squad just doing that and everybody else is kind of being the slightly more defensive role then you have a real good combination there because you have enough people on the rest of the team you don't need a lot of people to go and make these caps and remember the other thing as well about being proactive and moving around the base and being fast and sort of getting to preempt the situation it's not always about getting the cap that's the other point it's not always necessarily about sort of trading bases or actually getting the cap what it's about is putting pressure onto those bases because as I talked about in my tactics conquest video um, I'll try and actually link that one sort of to try and give you an e example guys so if you haven't seen my sort of head down tactics video I'll show that one so check the notes on this video now look at this situation right here I'm 16 and I think my 16 one and a lot of the guys in my squad my team are also high scoring right now one sort of 10 and one piss poor gunplay there by me that was really bad I had some good shots on this round but that sucked um, Right, so we're generally scoring pretty well. The other team, they're not doing appalling, but they're generally not moving around. At this point in the game, I said, right, that's it. Okay, we need to change things here. Decided to move myself across, all right? Decided not to take anybody else with me, because I didn't feel like the other team were doing that bad. They just needed somebody else over there, so I moved myself across. And again, we're 100 tickets down, basically. Well, 114, really. 114 tickets down, and... You know, I didn't necessarily know whether we we're going to be able to turn this game around. I just thought, hey, these guys need someone to help them out a little bit. So I want to put myself over here and get on this. And uh, I'm putting a bit of fire down with this tank. Getting a few kills there. Um, and, and really, I just wanted to kind of say, hey guys, you know, I understand you're having a bad game. And so I'm coming to join and help you out a little bit, which is exactly what we're doing. So now I'm kind of moving, going to get back onto some of these objectives. A is going down. I was hoping that the guys, the sort of four or five guys behind me on the left, they were going to push up for that. Um, but yeah, when I was talking before about sort of bases and movement and stuff like that, about how it's good to put pressure on, right? Now, okay, look at the situation right here. They're capping A. If we can put some pressure onto D, which is what some of our guys are doing here, put pressure onto D, and I'm going to move to C as well. You think, well, why are you going to C loot in? Okay, you're never going to be able to solo on your own. That's not the point. Look at the map right now. They've got A and C, and we've only got B. Now, if we put pressure on C, that creates a confusion for them. I get shot in the back here by Noz, but it creates a confusion for them because 
if we are putting pressure on multiple points rather than just one point, they don't know necessarily which one to go to straight away. And you can see our guys managed to cap D here. Notice we have nobody at B. I guarantee you that's going to start flashing in a mo. Oh, oh, that's why I spawn at B. <laughs> it's hilarious how, like, however, I, I don't remember this round at all, and yet I'm sort of predicting my own sort of uh, tactics as I go along right here. Uh, now, I saw this guy in the mini. Oh, no, I saw this guy go down, so I knew there was someone here. Got no reason to move. This guy's just going to come into my trap, and I was just waiting for him to come out here. There's no way that guy was going to get through here. So basically, yeah, that was really sort of my thinking is that. It's it, putting pressure onto bases is not always about capping. It's about pulling the enemy off or creating confusion for them. All right. So just you as one person can do this. Just one person. It, you know, even if you get killed, all right, that's not the important thing. Okay. What's important is creating a breathing space for your team members. All right. And that's why often I will solo bases or I go to bases because. Like I say, if, if I kill like one, two guys, and I manage to start making a cap, if I destabilize the base, that's scary enough for the enemy that they will run back to get it. And then that creates a breathing space and a platform for our guys. And look at this, we've, we kind of have turned the game around. We probably haven't done it fast enough to actually take control of the uh, sort of full round right here. But at least we're making an effort and an impact, and that's really what's important. It's just about having a more interesting game, a more balanced game, because as you know, what I've said many times before, I'd rather have an interesting loss than a real, you know, steamroll of a win. Showing my piss poor pistol skills right here, all over the place. Oh no, I did actually kill him. Okay, all right, wasn't as bad as I thought. He was jumping all over the place like a bloody jack in the box. Anyway, oh, I get cut down by the tank. So yeah, that's really what it's about for me. It's more about just having a fun, interesting game. And to be honest, that's what you know you really should be playing for at the end of the day is having an enjoyable experience. And that's what I always try to have with my server is an enjoyable experience. Doesn't always mean that you're going to win, but at least you have a better game. There's nothing more I hate than just constantly being destroyed, just ground into the ground. Like it's so much better to just have like a more balanced overall gameplay for everybody. Um, because otherwise as well it empties out servers. I mean how many times have you played on a server where your team just gets dominated and maybe they hang in there for like one more game and then they get dominated again and then everybody's just like oh the hell with this and they just leave. And I've said this to my guys when we were playing this evening, um, we were playing another round of Conquest on uh, what was it, Aftermath and um, the round was awful, like we literally destroyed the opposition um, and as I said earlier I don't always like to balance teams up straight away because uh, it was interesting actually we went on to the next round and their team performed a lot better so that actually kind of proved my point um, but at the same time in that specific round we did actually totally annihilate them but rather than constantly going for the horrific spawn trap um, what I said to my guys and I know some people dis disagree with me about this on another video um, but I said to the guys I said you know come on back up here let's let them have one base right let them have one base they'll have a stage point it'll actually get them back in the game a little bit so we did we backed off we let them have D um, and it allowed them to have a little bit more engagement with the game rather than just getting spawn trapped constantly and the reason for that is like I say you know I don't want the server to just die because they had one bad game because everybody has a bad round but there's a difference between having a bad round and having a totally you know annihilated bad round um so that for me is you know the kind of thing now i I've, i know that realistically nobody else probably would ever play like that nobody else is going to actually back off of a base they're just going to complete you know if, if a team is in a position that they can allow themselves to be dominated like that then people are going to exploit it and they're going to push it and they're going to really sort of destroy them but Within my server, I'm in the position. I'm in a, the position where I can actually say to people, "Hey guys, come on, back up. Let's not do this. Let's actually have just a better game overall." Um, and you know, the other thing is, it doesn't happen every time. Uh, people don't always listen to what I say, or maybe I'm on the other team and we're the ones getting destroyed, and there's not much I can do about it at all. But you know, just from my point of view, it, it just does help to kind of run the server better, and just everybody has a better experience. And it's a shame that that doesn't happen more. And it scares me a little bit going into Battlefield 4. It scares me a little bit about how dominating some of the new mechanics are going to be. I'm a little bit concerned about some of those things. I will be talking to Dasker and Levercap about my concern about those things, so those videos are going to be coming up. But anyway, let's have a little look at what's going back on here. Now, we've kind of continued. We haven't really had the strength to kind of really push ourselves back into the game at this point. Um, we're still about the same. We haven't really gained any ground at all. We're down on 100. Uh, so we haven't really gained any points. We did have like a little bit of period where things looked like they were going a little bit better. But then I think what happened was 
that was down to mainly the other team's complacency and then once we get to this stage they kind of realized hey okay the team are sort of you know turning things they're pushing back and you know they, they really put the hurt on us um, so that's kind of turned it right back around but just from a kind of moral perspective uh, or not mor moral morale just from a morale ex perspective uh, I, I think this kind of really helped people out and uh, you know we didn't have a ton of people leaving after this round uh, just from the fact that I changed sides and I was talking to the guys on team chat and I said like yeah come on you know let's get back in the game let's go here let's go there and you know I think people just had a more enjoyable round overall so that's this one today guys hope you've enjoyed um let me know your thoughts about sort of this kind of conquest play and and you know i'm interested to hear from you guys whether you think it's better to sort of defend in situations whether you're one of the persons who likes to kind of push forward and be more proactive but like i say it, again it, like so many things it's not black and white all right that's the most important thing to remember there is no one rule for any given situation you shouldn't just you shouldn't be like, I defend in conquest, or I am a super attacking and proactive. Like, people always make the fantastic thing, they're like, oh, it's a ring of ring of roses. And it's like, well, that situation shouldn't occur. Because if you're playing a game and it just becomes a ring of roses, where you're basically going from one base to the next, to the next, to the next, the reason that's happening is because you're letting it happen, all right? That situation should never occur. There's nothing wrong with being proactive and moving to bases in fast succession, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Because if you can cap a base and move to the next and move to the next, that's awesome, all right? That means that you're able to dominate the enemy and get into that situation. But if people are sort of going, oh, well, you know, that shouldn't happen. Because you can see that they're doing it. Just preempt them. Predict it. Move to the base before they get to the base and then defend it. Easy. Anyway, more conquests and stuff coming up soon, guys. Got a lot of videos to break down, a lot of information to come up, and more Battlefield discussion coming up. Got a few things on that on the way. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.